Okay. So what's going on guys? Welcome back to Awesomely Explain and today I'm going to explain the ending of it chapter 2 and also a full breakdown of the film story. So stick around till the last of the video and be sure to hit that like button. So let's get started, shall we? After the horrifying death of Adrian Mellon and a number of disappearances in the town of Derry, it becomes clear that the Pennywise has returned to the surface once more. However, Mike has remained in the city observing any kind of strange activities that are happening there. He calls on his old friends from the Losers Club to remember their oaths and pleads with them to return to the town to stop Pennywise once and for all. Each of them other than Mike has went on to have a successful career, but this phone call that they receive make them slowly begin to remember their childhood's fear and also the terror that awaits there, and some simply cannot handle it. With Stan committing suicide out of fear, which we later discover is because he feels that this would have held them back, which I will get back to that in a minute. But I have to mention this that this is a very interesting new take on the characters. As Beverly is once more in a toxic relationship, similar to her childhood, is dealt abuse by her husband, Tom Rogan. On the other hand, Bill, who was always a metaphor for Stephen King, is married writer who has trouble finishing stories. This is kind of an interesting allegory for the book itself and how it's finished. And the movie actually takes a huge creative liberty at the end and changes it up quite a lot from the source material. In the original miniseries, Bill's wife, similar to Tom Rogan, is absent for a lot of the movie. In that series, she was captured by Tom and then taken to Pennywise, where she was sent into a vegetative state. But this is completely missing from the movie, which I personally think it's a smart move, because that was a pretty lackluster part of the adaptation. Ben is a successful architect, However, he also suffers from alcoholism and still have a side that loves Beverly, which becomes a driving force for him to returning back to the town. Eddie is still a hypochondriac and has pretty much went on to marry his mother, literally. And similarly to Beverly, he finds himself trapped in a cycle of unhappiness. The biggest change comes in the form of Richie, who like the source material is a famous comedian who enjoys national acclaim. But the movie changes him drastically. In fact, that is actually gay and is in love with Eddie. This sort of mirrors Ben's affections for Beverly. And while it may sound slightly jarring to some people who weren't expecting such a turn, but I actually think that movie pulls it off really well. Back to the present, they reunite in a city and discovers that not only are things far worse when they were children, but that Pennywise is also out for them as adults. He's far more vicious. And from the off, it's clear that this is completely different monster altogether. They're far more gore and movie feels a lot more mature than the chapter 1. Now those who are expecting to see the movie full of Pennywise will be very disappointed as the creature or the character of Pennywise isn't in the film that much. Well, it itself pop up often, which I was really hoping to see more of. Anyway, the Losers Club begin to recount their childhood memories and throughout Pennywise torments them as he continues his reign of terror, which shows that how helpless they are against him. It's terrifying and it's a huge step up from the prior film that shows why they must stop the cycle. There's also a huge scene in which we revisit the Losers Club back when they were younger. Now, I have noticed a lot of online criticism about the de-aging effect which I agree came across pretty poorly. I don't know why the creative team decided to do this as it don't make much sense. It took me completely out of the film. I understand that child actor had grown up but I don't think that it would have been as bad to see the actors as they are. Marvel really sets the bar high with their de-aging, but unfortunately this massively pales in comparison, almost becoming laughable at times. While it's not enough to break the film, but it is quite noticeable and probably be a big critic against the film. Now not long after this, we discover Pennywise's origin story and the group uncovers the way to defeat him, which is known as the Ritual of Chud, a metaphysical ritual that will destroy the creature on psychic level and finally vanquish him. The group looks for totems from their childhood that will help to empower them so they can finally face down against the creature. However, this turns out one big bait, which I'll get back into later. 
Henry Bolts returns and he still act as an another hurdle between the losers club and their final showdown. But after he dies, they return to near Bolts house and Pennywise uses all the elements from their childhoods to try make them remember the fear that has haunted them for so long. It's an awesome scene that by far the best from the original movie. It even switches up the Stanley head in the refrigerator scene and uses him as a child rather than an adult. There's also a Thing reference that I think is pretty awesome. But finally, the group make it to the Pennywise lair. Here they are given a real test and it's looked like fear is slowly overcoming them. As they begin to deal with the enormity of that task, they head into the lair and is even a reference to the tale from the book. As they go into the final showdown, the ritual of Chert fails and it did nothing to Pennywise and Mike reveals that it didn't work initially but he believed that due to their self-belief they may have been able to overcome it. Pennywise using its psychic abilities transforming reality around them while exchanging into the spider creature that massively breaks them down mentally, reminding them of all the trauma that they've been through, most notably Beverly which is when the most blood on screen in a scene moment happens. However, with the love that exists between the characters, they're able to get each other out of it. Ben saves Beverly and vice versa. Richie's belief in Eddie strengthens him. Bill apologized to a vision of Georgie in which he admits that he lied about being sick as a child and that he just didn't want to play with him that day. It's a really heartbreaking moment that completely recontextualized the film. And I think it's one of the best reveals in the movie. The group then break out of the spell, they fight the creature head on. And in this scene we also get another big death of the film. Eddie attempting to save Richie tries to spear Pennywise but unfortunately he is impaled by the creature which eventually leads to the character's death. This inspires the group to no longer fear Pennywise. The creature then shrinks down to the point that the losers are able to finally kill the creature by ripping out his heart. In the finale, though the losers club win, it's a very bittersweet ending. We see Richie carving out plus E in the same way that people often do with a teenage crush, which shows that he really lost the love of his life and use humor to cover this up. It's a tragic reveal that really hits home and cements that we all have regrets in life that we wish we had the time to go back and change. We learn of Stan's true intentions through a letter in which he reveals that if he had come back to Derry that Pennywise would have become stronger due to the fear that he had for it and this would have probably meant that they would have lost. It's a nice little twist from the original work and I think Stan's death always felt a little bit underdeveloped to me and lacking in purpose. Whereas this really drives home that it wasn't in vain and in the end he did it for right reasons rather than purely because he was a coward. People who commit suicide often express their their feelings of being burdened upon others. And this adds a lot of weight to the thinking behind why Stan made the choice that he did. Ben and Beverly start a relationship together and Bill and Mike discuss Stan's letter and Mike finally decide to leave Derry once and for all. Mike has pretty much been told his entire life that he'll be never successful and that's the reason he stayed behind in Derry. In the end though, it's a completely change from the original book and the miniseries. I think this works a lot better and it's end the film on emotional ground. Well, as for myself, I did enjoy the movie but the lack of Pennywise did make me a little bit salty. Because this is one of the main things that people come to see this film for. I think the children will always be the strongest element for me. While reading books and watching miniseries, this was easy to relate to and who doesn't remember growing up being scared of things that now seems laughable. I remember when I was 6, I was really scared of looking down my bed and always thought that there was someone down there looking for me. Now this might seem laughable nowadays but stuff like that made me really connect to the story which is why the adult section of the film didn't appeal as much. Which is why critics are having difficulty praising this film. But don't get me wrong though, it chapter 2 deals with a lot of its subject in a mature and adult manner that do still make one of the interesting horror movies of the last decade. We follow characters who went through traumatic experience during their childhood. Pennywise is almost an open secret in the town though no one ever brings it up. These characters repress their memories only to be confront them years later and finally put an end to what happened to them years later. Although Pennywise full origin haven't been explored in the film, but don't worry I will explain Pennywise full origins in my next video, so keep an out for that video. And obviously I would like to hear your thoughts on 8 chapter 2 in the comment section below, so let me know. 
And if you enjoyed this video, then please hit that like button. And if you want to come talk to me about movies, TV shows and comics, then you can follow me on Instagram as it's the best way to get in touch with me at Awesomely Explained. Also subscribe to the channel so you never miss an update. I'm your buddy Mr. Flex and you guys are awesome. Hello.